Edward, Kid Ory, born in Woodridge uh, Plantation near La Plata, Louisiana in 1886. Uh, in his early years, he actually played the banjo. He started playing music very, very young, probably uh, so young that his mouth had not uh, grown to the point he could actually play a trombone. Um, and of course, like everyone else, he started out on one of those um, Civil War era trombones. By the time he had moved into uh, New Orleans, uh, he lived on Jackson Street and he had one of those brand new modern trombones. Young kid just practicing and one day walks up Mr. Buddy Bolden, King Buddy Bolden, and immediately he wanted to hire this young kid to play in his band. So you can say that uh, Kid Ori was the first trombone shorty, so to speak, yeah. Except his sister said, no, 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 no. I'm not letting my little brother go out there and play with you grown men. He might learn some bad habits, get him away from here. So Kid Ori just kept on practicing. But somewhere in 1910 or so, he did start bands around New Orleans, Storyville, I am sure. And he had great bands with people like Joe Arver and uh, Noonan and uh, the Dodds Brothers and even Louis Armstrong uh, was in his band for a while. Um, somewhere around 1919, this is a couple years after Storyville had closed, uh, he got a little disenchanted with uh, New Orleans and thought he would seek uh, greener pastures. He knew about what was developing out on the West Coast, so his next stop was L.A. Showed up in L.A. about uh, 1919, and he had his Creole Orchestra out there because uh, Kid Ori was a French-speaking uh, Creole. He walked the walk and talked the talk, so to speak. Um, so he surrounded himself with uh, other New Orleans musicians out there, and uh, he had this particular way of doing business. He paid a record company to record him, and then he bought the pressings from them, and he released his recordings on his own label, Ori Sunshine Orchestra, and then he had them distributed through one record store in town in LA. That way he controlled the ebb and flow of the money. He had good business sense. Uh, he was also very, very loyal. A lot of musicians who recorded with him on those original recordings, uh, Society Blues and Ori's uh, Creole Trombone, uh, somewhere around 1920 uh, or so, uh, they stayed with him on late into his career. Uh, somewhere around uh, 1925, uh, he became uh, disenchanted again, a little restless, and he went from um, L.A. to Chicago and joined that Chicago jazz scene that was really, really busting with the great migration that was taking place from the north to the south. Uh, and there he reunited with uh, King Oliver, uh, and uh, all of the people he knew, and he worked his way up. He played with King Oliver, he played with uh, Bessie Smith and Ma Rainey, and he played with the Dodd Brothers, and he even played with Louis Armstrong for a while. He was a very ambitious guy, and evidently he was well liked because everybody wanted to play with him. Fine, fine musician, fine, fine gentleman. Uh, he hung out there, did a great job. Around the 40s, there was a rebirth of this resurgence of this early jazz music as a kind of reaction to bebop. Bebop was this real strange stuff, and a lot of people wanted to get back to the traditional jazz, but there was Kid Ori, so he had a great resurgence in the 40s. And uh, some of his original band members from uh, the 1910s in New Orleans were still playing with him in the 40s. This guy lived until 1973. And in that time, while he was in um, Chicago, 
he was a great mentor to the young Benny Goodman and many other musicians from Chicago who were trying to figure out his jazz. And once he moved to New York, he was a great uh, friend and mentor to a lot of jazz musicians, including a very young Charles Mingus. So Kid Ori is one of the greatest of the great, had a very, very long career. And what is very special to me is he created the tailgate trombone style. I'm a trombone player. And that tailgate slide is all about the guy sitting on the back of the wagon or whatever so he could move that slide in and out do his lissandos and rips and all that. And also play this very rhythmic counter rhythm to the melody in all the early New Orleans jazz type music. Most people think he developed that particular trombone style based on his experience as a rhythmic player on the banjo as a very, very young man. Edward Kid Ori, legend, great musician, and mentor to so many for so many years. Thank you.